And the good day sports fans, I am Paul the Ball, and I'm very happy to say my guest today is Mr. Stanley Goodrich. No stranger to you when it comes to sports, of course, a gold medalist at the Crypto Games in his own right. And really, um, very, very, very well read when it comes to sports right across the board. So today, um, Stanley and I are going to be speaking uh, a bit about health in sports. And just before we get into that, let's let me remind you that I am Paul on the ball. And we are here in collaboration with the that's CBN Radio 90.9, uh, 92.3. And of course, you can get us on, on the flow on channel 101. And a good, uh, good day to you, Stanley Goodridge. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you, Paul. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to have Good you. Day. And, and Stan, let's get right to the meat of the matter for the listening audience here. Uh, I want to talk about a bit today about health, uh, helping the community, uh, uh, in particular obesity and you know people out there just putting on weight because they don't know young children putting on weight, you know middle aged people putting on weight. Tell us a bit about from your perspective uh, how you know how does it happen and how can we how, how can we help those people. Don't understand obesity. Well, well, I think first and foremost, you have to go back in time historically to look at where we started and where we are now. Um, you remember probably a hundred years ago, we, we, we never had the onslaught of advertising that which we have now. And, and because of that, a bit, and that, that's a big factor, you know. It, it, the, and remember everything basically are influenced by North America and, and the, the, the lobbying groups in North America saw it fit to, to push forward certain products out of self-interest. And we, we, this part of the world and to want a better terminology in the, in the third world, um, be, became affected by that message, you know, and, and it, a, a, a lot of what you're seeing now is, is, is the history of that unfolding in terms of refined products and easy to access products, you know, and because the, the life size of people have changed so much, the, the, the go-to the go -to foods are just easy obtainable foods, which usually are <laughs> refined, unhealthy, over-processed foods. Let's talk about those unprocessed or overprocessed, really, foods. Um, people, people aren't aware, I don't think, but people who are maybe becoming obese or are already in, get along that line, what are the foods that they have to be wary of that maybe they aren't aware, wary of right now? Well, it's, it's, well let, me just, let me just first and foremost have a disclaimer. I'm not a registered dietitian or, or a medical doctor or anything like that. But what I do have is years of experience in the trenches as a, as a personal trainer, as a physical education and teacher, and just somebody who, who's extremely curious and interested in, in, in health. And, and, you know, a lot, a lot of times you have to be, there, there's, a, there's a famous saying, doctors differ and patients die. So we're not saying that you don't have respect for the medical fraternity, but one, one ought, ought to become more involved in one's healthcare, you know, along with your, your healthcare provider. It shouldn't be just left up to the healthcare provider only in exclusively, I think, especially in this day of information, you know, where we can yeah, we still rely on the doctors, but just, just be, just learn to think for yourself a little more. You know, so name some of these foods for me that we're, that we're talking about. What, what are we talking about here? Uh, well, basically all, all refined foods are not good for us because they, 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 the process that they use to refine them are usually laced with, with products that are not good for us physically. And the issue I have with refined foods is, especially refined carbohydrates, is that it, it, it creates an insulin spike in the body. And what I'm discovering now 
through my own personal research is that, that the, the big issue behind obesity is insulin, you know? Not even fat consumption to some extent, but insulin and, and the source of insulin is a lot of these refined sugars, you know, and refined carbohydrates. So candy bars, all the doses, yes. all the, the drinks, the candy think, sodas. Yes, yes. You know, uh, like, you know, when I was teaching in Virgin God, I observed these children going to buy a particular soft drink. That it was like, I think it was a, a 28 ounce tin can wow, amazing. of lethal death. Yes. And, I, and this was being just sold by these legal, I call them legal drug dealers, which right. is these stores, you know. And the children, when you observe these children, when you see them in, from primary school, observe them year after year, they would just get become more obese and more obese. And a lot of the ones that I used to teach, I see them now, and they are, for the most part, a lot of them are obese because, because of this, you know, the lifestyle that we've been led to believe, which is a lie. What, what about you know? when you see a child at the age of six, seven, eight, and they're going to, on their walk in the primary school with their parent, and they are just massive, they are big and fat. What has happened there? You see, you see, Paul, we, you see, at the same time, we, we can't, you see, we really can't become too judgmental either because obesity is a, is a very complex unfolding in the human physiology. Obesity is very complex. It's not just insulin alone. There's also a strong genetic factor, right? Which we have to understand. It is also genetic. So meaning because, yeah, the, yeah. the parent was big, they're going to be big as well? Well, there's, there's evidence to support that as, as a rule, as a rule. And then most remember, there's also degrees of obesity. You know, the people who we consider morbidly obese, it's definitely a genetic problem. And then you have some who are borderline who is, is more an environmental problem where, you know, the inner household that eats a particular way. And, but so there are degrees on this continuum because you know, there, there are three different body types that you have. If you look, just go out in society and look. What's you see, three? Do you know the most? You, you see the skinny type, the muscular type, and the obese type. Right. And in, in the medical parlance, they call ectomorph, endomorph, and mesomorphs. Right. right. And within and within the three grouping, there are also degrees of each one. It's very complex. You know, it's not just cut and dry this one, that one, or the other one. So with the, even within the ectomorph group, there's a, there's a degree of, of shape that can become more endomorphic or mesomorphic. In other words, if you see somebody who's extremely muscular, yes. right, those are considered to be mesomorphs. And somebody who's extremely obese is considered to be an endomorph. And a very skinny person is considered to be an ectomorph. And th that is, that affects how their body functions in a very, very deep way. So without we, don't, we, don't have, we don't have enough time to even go through I that. know. But I'm just you know? saying with, without being judgmental, yeah. um, if, for, the, for the listening audience, yeah. how do I know if I'm a boot? So let's assume that I don't know I'm obese, but I'm listening now. And based on what you're saying, I think, boy, I, I need to be really obese. How do I know? When I'm obese, well, there are, there are markers in it, like it's called the BMI, body mass index, which have to. If you, if you go to the doctor, the doctor can tell you because there are tests they can run. There are, there are markers that they can use, you know, based on your height, 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 weight ratio and your, your waist measurement. There, there are markers. You just have to go to a, a doctor who understands this and is aware of this, and they can guide you from there. So again, for those of you who are listening, this is CBN. Uh, I'm Paul on the ball, and we're here talking sports with Stanley Goodrich. As Stanley said earlier, he's not a doctor. We're just people who have spent many years in sports and give, given you, you know, um, from, a, from a sporting perspective, uh, really, uh, you know, some ideas as to where you can go. We're talking about the, the levels of obesity here now. And uh, Stanley, uh, I guess the next thing we're going to say, if 
if, if I have decided that I, based on my weight and my height and what have you, that I am obese, uh, then what are the foods I should be focusing on? What, 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 what should I, what should I be eating? What should, is it a certain types of body that eats certain types of food? Well, well, you know, if it's, it's really very straightforward and simple. And it's simple in the sense that it's simple, but not easy to do. In other words, you know, without getting into the philosophy of whether you're vegan or non-vegan or meat eater, and I'm not Correct. getting into that. Everybody has their own choice, right? All right. But basically, Paul, if, if you can catch it, you know, if you can catch it, pull it from the earth, you know, the food items exposed in the sun, basically that's what, that's what it should be consuming, which is the items most, most closest to nature, you know? And, and, and one, one of the, there are, two, there are two dangerous things that we consume. I go to the supermarket all the time. Yes. I wish I could say to people, but you see, you have to also consider people's economic status. And that's right. a big problem too. That is it. <laughs> two things that are damaging to our health is sugar. Sugar is like, I've always said that black people have been enslaved by sugar twice. Wow. Right? And I'll say it again. Black people have been enslaved by sugar twice. Because if you know the history of slavery, it started there and we are now slave to sugar now. Again, wow. And there's a double enslavement. So we planted right? sugar and now we are yes. in the sugar. We are addicted to sugar. Addicted to right? sugar. So now we are now slaves to sugar. And and the next the next big issue is industrialized oils. Yeah, industrialized oils or industrial oils. I sound like um, omega-6 we're talking about. Yes, corn oil, vegetable oil, canola oil. You know, all those oils are, all those oils are extremely bad for us. Right? I mean, quite, quite frankly, if, if it could move even, and this is where you know, people get kind of almost religious about their oils. You know, we have a thing about coconut oil in the Caribbean. Yes. And, I, I used to be a heavy coconut oil consumer and I've, and I've stopped it because I realized that even the coconut oil is not good for you. You know, and it, so what about olive oil? You see, you see the problem with oil, and if you, if you don't believe me, I think I say, do your own research, right? The problem with, with, with these oils is very simple, that they damage the endothelial lining of the cell arteries. Right, that there's a there's a thin lining in the arch called the endothelial cell, and the oils damage that. They kind of create a lot of free radicals. Yes, yeah. oils, especially when you heat it. You see, in places like Italy and Spain, where they use these oils, a lot of the times the oil is not heated; they just pour it over their salad, and that makes a big difference. Yeah, and even yeah. even and that's just something cultural. I don't necessarily agree with it, right? But, but, but anything I say, people can research it for themselves, but research it with objectivity, you know, not with bias. Yeah. I just, my, 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 my simple observation is this. God did not make juice, nor God did not make oil. No. Simple. If you can understand that, the problem is solved. Yes? Yeah. You, you, can, you can get a dry coconut, break it, and eat the meat, but <laughs> your jaw is going to get so tired of eating this meat that you will never consume near the amount of oil that's going to damage you. Furthermore, if you're going to eat the dry coconut, it is encased in fiber, which your body dispels it easily. Right? But when you, get the, when you get the refined version, which is a straight oil, it becomes a problem in the body. But because we, we, we've been socialized to use these things, we think it's okay and it's not okay. Oh, excellent. excellent. We're going to take a pause for a course to thank our sponsors, Sol Botanic Service Station. When we come back, more with CBN and Paul the Ball as we talk about health, staying healthy here in the British Virgin Islands. Stick and stay. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Welcome back, sports fans. I am Paul on the ball, and you're listening to CBN and watch us on 101 on Flow, uh, 90.9 FM and 93.3. And um, with me today, my guest is Mr. Stanley Goodridge. 
Great to have you here, Stan. We are talking about obesity and health, Stan. And when we left, we were talking about uh, you know, diet and, 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 and what we should be eating. What I want to get to now is the solution. Uh, one of the key things, it's, it's a new year now. We're just going into, into a new month. The year is young. Most people gear to the gyms, just want to get in shape and want to exercise and what have you. What's your thoughts on that? And, and, and let's talk about that first, and then maybe you can talk about some recommendations in the gym. Well, you see, having a part of my life, I've spent a lot of years in, in the gym being a personal trainer. And so I um, had observed for many years different modalities and to have some because I'm always questioning things. I, what used to disturb me when I just started out was the fact that people weren't people weren't losing weight in the way I thought they should, right? And it used to bother me for a while. Then, then, then I started to do my own research to realize that it is it is extremely difficult to lose weight. You know, let me just, it, it is not easy to lose weight. Right. The body, the body is not stupid. The, when you try to lose weight, the body thinks you're trying to kill it. So there's a mechanism in the body that, that, that actually will slow that process down if you do not trick the body, right? The body has to be essentially tricked every step of the way. Now, the, the big problem with weight loss, and I, I, I didn't like the term weight loss, because you can have weight loss and you can have fat loss. Mm -hmm. So we really should be losing, using the term fat loss. It's all about fat loss and not weight loss. If you're on chemotherapy, you lose weight. If you smoke cigarettes, you lose weight. You know? So it's, you have to look at really fat loss is really what's important. Yes? OK, so we're talking about fat loss. What, yeah, and that's, and that's what's really driving us, fat loss. And there's a, there's a thing in the, in the brain they call the set point that controls your body weight. So you have, like, you have a, a, a base cell weight that we're all healthy at. And what I've observed is that it took me a long time to figure this out. You'll be going along and you start to put on weight. And it's as if the body gets used to the weight. Yeah? Yeah. And, and there's, it, there, there's, this, there's this curve that is difficult to describe without drawing some kind of diagram. There, there seems to be this curve that the body goes up. Once it gets to a certain point, and everybody's different, and you accumulate a certain amount of weight the, the more obese you become, is the more difficult it becomes to lose it. Yeah? Right. So uh, one or two things. Either you, either you, you don't become obese in the first place, or you, you, you figure out a way to nip it in the bud, or it becomes extremely difficult to lose weight. Let's say I'm extremely or, obese. Yes. And I've decided I want to go to the gym to, be yes. able to lose that weight. Where can I start? Where should I start? What should my focus be? Well, first and foremost, before you, before you even start the gym, you need to go to the doctor and get a full medical checkup, right? So, so, so that there are no underlying problems. Right. Because, you, you know, that, that's, a, that's a serious issue because, because if, if you go to the gym and, and just, as they say, just go gung-ho, you can really do yourself some serious damage, you know? I mean, to the point where you can actually kill yourself if you're not careful. So my, my advice is go to the doctor and then whatever you do, start off very gently, right? Because, because you have to give yourself, again, depending on the degree of obesity, you have to give yourself at least six months because the first three months is just to get in shape. You have to first, in other words, like in, in track and field parlance, we always say you have to train to train. You know, and it applies to weight loss too. You have to train to train. So first you have to get fit. If you're not fit enough, you can't burn the calories in order to lose weight anyway. So you have to first get fit. And usually, again, it, it depends on your level of unfitness. It, it takes about three months on a proper program. And, and, 
What is that proper program? I was going to say, how strenuous should a proper uh, program be? Yeah, that's... Just a that's general, a, right? no, I, mean, I don't want to put you on, on a specific... Yeah, program. that's a... Big, you know, if, if, just if, a general Yeah, if, 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 if you can... If, if, you, if you can afford it, you find a good personal trainer. And unfortunately, good, good personal trainers are few and far between. Yes. Unfortunately. And there's... And usually okay. not cheap. Yeah, and there are only one or two names that come to mind who I having interacted with them and observed them. The only one or two that I would feel comfortable enough to recommend, quite frankly, because they, they have been trained and qualified people, not just people who saw it as a, a, a rec recreational career to just go in. No, you have to really understand what you're doing. You're dealing with people's lives. You have right. to understand nutrition, psychology. You know, physiology, the things you have to understand. You have to, it does take experience. And most people, unfortunately, most, most, and the ones I've seen, the trainers here, don't really, I mean, it sounds harsh, but just one observation. You know, it, it, it's questionable, the expertise. Yes, it, again, for those of you who are listening, this is Stanley Goodridge, who himself won a gold medal at the Rift Games um, in the discus. Um, Thrown discus shot and all the other different uh, events of that kind, but um, very good, very very knowledgeable in his in his own right. And you're plugged into CBN. I am Paul on the ball. We're talking a bit, a bit about obesity and um, the foods you should eat, the myths about um, diet, and, and and getting back in the gym. And that's where we had reached now, Stanley. Uh, so just so that we don't we don't miss it. I wanted to, first of all, tell me uh, just one or two exercises, simple exercises that somebody can do at home or in the gym, wherever they are, that can just begin to help them to do some you see, you see, basic way. And again, okay. They've gone to the doctor, okay. Let's, 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 they've gone yes. to the doctor. The doctor says that they, they, they need to lose some weight. Should they, for example, um, walk a couple of days a week, let me paint a let me paint a picture for you. Okay. I see a lot of people walking now. And yeah. in order to be optimistic, you can say, well, at least they are doing something. Correct. Which is great because that is obviously better than not move. So at least they are moving. Correct. Right? And that's fine. But we have to move towards optimum movement. So, so yes, people are walking and that's good, but that is just that is just the beginning, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So do, you know, let me be very clear on this. Yeah. It is good that people are walking; they should not stop walking, but walking alone will not do it, right? Because then there are degrees. I see people walking, talking on their cell phones, having casual conversations. At some point, you have to walk where you can't even talk if you're breathless. Because there is also a, an intensity factor. Yes. You know? So there is, there is that because, because the, the, our, our bodies have to adapt to the stress. To, to just, just to, to limit the day-to-day -day stress of life. That's why I exercise. You know? Exercising shouldn't be just casual. It also has to be reasonably stressful within, with, obviously within degrees and the person's ability. Right? But there needs to be that. Yes. Um, the next thing that people people tend to shy away from, which is extremely important, is strength training. Uh, I'll hedge to bet that strength training is equally as important as the so-called cardio work that people do. Probably even more important. Strength training done properly is probably even more important. And this is very controversial now, but hear me out. Strength right. training done, done properly is probably even more important than the so-called cardio work that people do. Note I said strength training done properly. Right. right, which which is not is not really being done, from my perspective, not, not even being done here. Well, interesting. I mean, I just I was, it, it, yeah. it's uh, not what I said done properly. Yeah, it's a strong comment. That is, we're nearly we're time we're we're the time o'clock. I just want to relate this whole topic now to COVID nineteen and where we and where we're at. And it's a simple question is, how do we stay healthy? Um, what's the what's the best things for us to eat and to do well, to stay healthy and to stay you know to, to 
well, well, Paul, avoid yeah, COVID yeah. as much as we can. Yeah, there, there are a lot of there are a lot of ideas out there floating around the internet, and you can go online and look. And you know, sure. so it really it really comes down to what you want to believe or not believe, or or what science says. Or you know, I can only tell what I do personally. Right. Personally. Share, share and, that with us if you know. In, and interestingly enough, for whatever the reason, I I can tell you from I know myself, I've. I've always come down with the flu once or twice a year because I've maybe exercising too hard and being, but but I noticed since since 2019 for the whole year of 2019 to 2020, I've not even once even caught a sniffle. And I'm saying it's interesting, you know, and and I've been querying myself as to why that is. And maybe I think I think I've down regulated my exercise program. I don't exercise as hard as I used to. Right. right, and and maybe it's just all this hand washing and maybe, but because I've always taken vitamins and you know, but what what taking I've been, vitamins, exercising, yeah, yeah, right, and and you know, so far I've not even had not even a sniffle because and I'm, I and I said I could easily contribute to what I'm doing now, maybe maybe not, you know, and I, so. It's, you have to look first and foremost what, what builds the immune system. Yeah. So I probably for me, I, I used to exercise too hard. You know? So I've 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 kind of learned now to kind of and it's very difficult because, yeah. because once if you love to exercise, you'll push yourself, right? Of course. Yeah. Okay. And I take exercise reasonably hard, but not as hard as I used to. Yeah. So and, don't 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 over exercise. And of course, this this yeah, this doesn't even, go for the track athlete because they're not talking about they are, them. Yeah, they are they are they are different group. They are what they are. It's not about the, the regular Joe and the regular Jane, you no. Know, eh? Um, but I can only tell what I do. I, I I take a full range of vitamins. And doctor tell oh, you don't you don't need vitamins. Well, I'm just in my opinion. Right. I've been taking vitamins longer than I have not been taking vitamins. Right. And I think they have. I've, I've, I've been done well by then. So what about Especially. the person that says three square meals a day? All I need is three square meals a day. Well, yeah, but yeah, you see, it, it becomes very difficult now because of, you remember the soil has been denatured in and so the, what, what, what we assume we'll be getting from foods we no longer get from yes. foods. So if they tell you an orange is 60 milligrams of vitamin C, well, these oranges we get here, I doubt very much yeah, they might taste like oranges, but I doubt very much that you'll be getting 60 milligrams of vitamin C from those oranges. You know, instead of, so, so we, we are being duped all around. Because we, we have we, all a decent vitamin C. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, another thing, yeah, but ascorbic acid is not vitamin C. Right. Be very clear, ascorbic acid is not vitamin C. Correct. The vitamin C complex involves other components. Ascorbic acid is only a part of vitamin C. So you need to go to the pharmacy, right? And and I, I don't want to call the name of a particular pharmacy. But yes, there's a particular right. pharmacy that sells the right vitamin C. Right. People go and do your own research. Okay. You'll find it. Right. right? They want to tour around. And it is not ascorbic <laughs> acid. Okay? All right. Yes. I got you. I, I would just say it's not a very pretty pharmacy. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> all right. So look for a pretty pharmacy and you yes, should be yes, fine. Yes, yes, Somewhere Sounds in good. town. <laughs> Somewhere yes. in town. <laughs> Sounds very pretty. Well, this yes. is uh, Stanley. We're in, we're in a child of the clock here. I really appreciate uh, you. But, but let, me just, let me just add one more thing. So we'll I let have you to drive this open, one last drive open this point very quickly. Please. Go right People ahead. need to strength train. As you get older, strength training becomes more critical and less critical. Define it. Break it down for somebody. Muscle tissue behaves like the endocrine system. Muscle tissue is important for your health. Physical example, strength training. Strength training. Go to the gym. You have to go to the gym. If you don't go to the gym, find ways to buy barbells, dumbbells, whatever. And you, but you need, because simple push-ups won't do it. It's unfortunate, but it's just reality. Because we no longer go out and farm and lift lumber and, you know, the physical hard labor to work on muscles. We no longer do that. And simple farming is not enough. You need... It's just, it's, just, it's just a reality part. We need resistance training. Well, Stanley, listen, I really want to thank you for coming in and taking the time out with us today. You've been listening to Mr. Stanley Goodwich, who himself is a gold medalist at the Crypto Games, competing for Jamaica, by the way, so very competitive indeed. And you've been listening to CBN, 
course, we are CBN Radio 90.9 as well as 90.9, 2.3. Of course, on Flow 101. So appreciate you plugging in with us. Until next time, good sports on you. Appreciate you being here. Bye for now.